The person that is here. To seize this opportunity to announce to us that this gathering is a liturgical and worship gathering. We are here, Ibrahim Yakoa. We thank God for making it possible. Wherever you are, you when to stand up and we shall tell you when to kneel down. Mass to report at the... May I take this time to recognize the presence of General Abdusalam Abubakar, former head of state of Nigeria, under whom the deceased found favor to be an honorable minister. Ministry for Solid Minerals. So that, uh, Sir, you're welcome. May I also have the pleasure to of Borno State, Al Mrs. Yunadi Usman. May I also recognize the presence of Mr. Barista Amechi. May I also recognize the presence of the governor of Benue State. governor is here. Sir, you're welcome. Her Excellency Hajia Halima Wada, wife of the executive governor of Kogi State, say, God bless Nigeria. Judith Amechi, Your Excellency, you're welcome. <laughs> Forum really out of good conscience and self respect, move out of that canopy, please. Thank you very much for your obedience. Of the death of the Holy Mass will abide from inside our dearly beloved. This is a solemn assembly, a prayer call. The choir can begin singing. All cameramen and press and stay. We do not need you. <clears throat>
session and family members. on any of those seats, please kindly redress, find a proper seat. The President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, Archdiocese, religious. Proper position to witness what in between is causing a lot of obstruction from my gifts. You may be justified when you give sentence as seen as I conceive. I grow weak as in heaven. of men they were punished their hope is full of immortality having been disciplined a little they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself like gold in the furnace he tried them and like a sacrificial bond offering he accepted them in the time of their visitation they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his elect. This is the word of the Lord. You ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who are falling asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who are falling asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Blessed to little ones, the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself. That he wanted me to say a few words at this celebration. I thought that he had given me a very difficult assignment. At times like this, we always think we are different. The, the more we know, that if we knew a bit more, we could be a bit more certain, even if tentatively and haltingly. We wish that God will grant some of us the real privilege of taking us into confidence and that He will open our ears and whisper some privileged information so that those of us who ought to know, or at least so the world thinks, those of us whom the world believes are close to God, that we might use this kind of information, secret information, as a means of encouraging our brethren. St. Paul, however, echoes the words of Isaiah when he says, Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. We must, however, finally surrender to the fact that as Job himself said, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And then, of course, sorry, that is the prophet Isaiah. But Job was later to ask God, can anyone teach God knowledge? When David's son, by Uriah's wife, died, David decided to dress up to end his fasting to the shock of his household. And Oronto Douglas's father had not died. But these questions are of no use now. Whatever our position, no matter our sadness, indifference, or even hidden joy, our God draws straight with crooked lines. We humans can absolutely say or change nothing in the plans of God. All that God does, no matter how bitter, is for our own good. Through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans of welfare and not evil to give you a future and a hope. He also assures us that no temptation has overtaken you, as he says through St. Paul, that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure to the end. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Actually tempted to assert that very few, if any, can beat his track record of Pakistan. He was the first person to become a minister, also the first person to become a federal permanent secretary, and the first to become the secretary to the government of Kaduna State. Of course, this is a state that was created way back in 1987. Mr. Yakua holds a special record of perhaps being the only Nigerian to have served two governors as deputies and to further ascend the position of governor with no break at all. It was historic at his swearing in ceremony as the governor of Kaduna State, an event that was quite spectacular. From the creation of the state in 1987 
The northern ruling class by policy seem to have erected an invisible sign that read, no Christians need apply to enter what would later be called Kashmir Ibrahim House or represent the state at the highest level that have continued to dump the state. And this is why a routine change from a deputy governor to a governor that would be taken as given generated the kind of interest right across the country because a phase in history had ended. Mr. Yakova's ascent to power bore little resemblance to our revered Mr. Nelson Mandela, whose ascent to the presidency of South Africa as the first black president in 1994 was a matter of international interest. President Jonathan did for us what the great president de Klerk did to end apartheid in South Africa. As with Mandela, Mr. Yakua went ahead to endear himself to a wide range of people across society. Thus, ending in the sobriquet, Yakua Nakua, coined by not his kinsmen in Fad and Kaguma, but by Muslims themselves. His death has robbed our country of one of the finest human beings who brought respectability and nobility to politics. A man who has demonstrated how faith could influence politics. A man who has demonstrated that politics can be played by its rules. And that indeed, politics can serve as a means of building bridges. He built bridges across the country. He made Muslims respect and appreciate the Christian faith. And he showed the human side of life that every life that few in public life have demonstrated. When, where he died, and even why he died, was a true reflection of who the man was. Some have even asked me, why did the governor not send a representative to the burial of Toronto Douglas, a young man who was of no immediate political benefit to Mr. Yakua? <laughs> Those of us who know Yakua very well can testify exactly that this is exactly what the man represented. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. ...to accept boxes around, find the nearest box. to gather a people to yourself so that sacrifice may be offered to you for you by the same spirit graciously make me, that they may become celebrate these mysteries for on the night he said the blessing to his disciples saying eat of it take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Paul, and with all the saints. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord. Jonathan, Your Excellency, the Senate President, Your Excellency, the Speaker House of Reps, Your Excellencies, 
all the executive governors here present, my father's brothers. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Everybody present here today is VIP to us as you would. We will all need your prayers and support to fill in these extra, extra large shoes. Because we believe with prayers, nothing is impossible. I stand here today a very happy man. Why? Because what I have, from what I have gathered, Nigerians have unanimously testified that Sir Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa, C-O-N, a Papal Knight of St. Gregory, the Emma Seningong, Babanjato, Giwa Amina, was indeed a good man and a great builder who touched so many lives across the length and breadth of this country. Sir Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa has indeed proven beyond reasonable doubt that good people can succeed in life, even in Nigeria, because he came, he saw, he conquered. We are the family in total submission to God, our Father Almighty, have accepted this loss as the will of God, and as Christians we say, that will be done. We have embraced this in good faith, as our Father has taught us to accept anything that happens in life, no matter how painful, as the will of God. I am not going to say much about my Father as his quality and his qualities, because I believe that this is akin to being the judge in my own case. The public has said a lot of things about Sir Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa. I believe that is in order because he was truly, truly a public servant, and indeed, he spent his life serving the public. At this juncture, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make a very important point. Yakoa was an apostle of peace, who would always preach peace at every opportunity he got. Yakoa has made the ultimate sacrifice and that sacrifice was made on the altar of peace. I pray that this sacrifice will not be a wasted sacrifice. I pray there will be peace in Kaduna State. I pray there will be peace in Nigeria. I want to say a special thank you to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, and his dear wife, Her Excellency the Impatient Jonathan, for the overwhelming love and support you have shown to us a lot of people describe the helicopter crash in Bielsa as an accident. I describe it as a grand design by God to show Mr. President and Nigeria that Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa was indeed his brother and sincerely believed in him and his administration. It was a grand design by God to show Northerners and Southerners that we are indeed brothers and sisters. We sincerely thank the Vice President of the Federal Republic his Excellency Aktek Namadi Sambo and his wife Haji Amina for the immense love and support. We pray that God protect and bless you and your families. I would also like to say a special thank you to all the state governors for their kind of fatherly love they have given to us and also the kind of brotherly love they are showing to our dear father even after death. Words cannot express our gratitude. We pray that God in his infinite mercy would bless and protect each and every one of you and your family. We pray that this kind of tragedy would not be the portion of any one of you again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I must seize this opportunity to pray for our new governor, His Excellency Alaji Mukhtar Ramalan Yero. I pray to God to bless him and his family. I pray that God will guide him and give him all the wisdom he needs to handle the affairs of our dear state. I cannot end without saying a big thank you to my super women here. Kiala, Rose, and Da. Your strength has made my job a lot easier. To the clergy that have stood by us, Bishop Bagobri, Bishop Kuka, and Bishop Mundagoso, Reverend Kujia, Reverend Olaya, and all the other clergy, we say a big thank you. God, watching over us, Rest in peace, our beloved Father. 
till we meet to part no more. Amen. Our daddy loved hymns. His favorite songs were usually from the Catholic hymn book. And so we love to sing one of his favorite hymns. Catholic hymn book 353, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. I'm standing so God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. While the howling storms of doubt are fail as ill, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, we stand in, we stand in. Standing on the promises of God our Savior, stand in, we stand. change the situation. Mm. I have since come to town that death has snatched my husband from me. In Psalm 116 verse 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In Revelation chapter 14 verses 13, he said, it said, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, 
says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their works follow them. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation separate me, or distress, or persecution, or famine, nakedness, peril, sword, or even death? Nothing can separate me and my family from the love of God, even in this situation. Like you had his lordship, when he was given homely, so many questions were asked when this incident happened. And the same questions were asked to me. Why did he have to go to Bayelsa? Why that barrier was banned for you? Mm. The places you will expect that the least place places to visit where you think he's not supposed to there, be there because he's a governor, because of his humility. These are the places he wants to go. So no wonder he insisted he has to go to Bayasa for this. I have spent 34 quality years, quality life with my dear husband, and when I begin to count my blessings of my togetherness with him, I cannot name them, I cannot count them, I, they, are so, they are so many. Together with him, we made a very beautiful family. Mm. God blessed our marriage in many ways. He was a perfect husband a perfect father, a perfect brother, a perfect uncle, a perfect cousin, a perfect in-law, and a perfect grandfather. Mm. He feared God and served him. He served humanity. As if he knew he would go before me, he imbibed in me all his virtues that has been described. Fear of God, peace, patience, respect, loyalty, dedication, humility, fairness, justice, hard work, contentment, sharing, identifying, sincerity, trustworthy, prudent, caring, loving, among many other things. For me, all these have culminated into a very good seed, which he sowed. And I will live and my children to partake from the bounty of these virtues. All I ask of you, my brothers and sisters, the people of Kaduna State, is to put the family in prayer. Amen. I cannot end this remark because I may not have the opportunity than to thank Mr. President once again, though my son has done everything perfect. Mr. President, I want to thank you and I want to also thank our mommy. I want to thank the Vice President and his wife. I want to thank all the governors you've really shown that my husband was part of you. I thank the wives of governors, my dear sisters. You have been with me since this incident happened. You have called, you have come, you have done everything to show me that you were really sisters. I will miss you because I will no longer be in your forum. Mm. But most of you have promised me that this relationship has already been established and it will be forever. Amen. May the death of my husband bring unity to the people of Kaduna State. Amen. And at this note, I want to once again congratulate the new governor of Kaduna State, my younger brother, 
Dr. Ramalan Yero, who I believe, since he has worked with my husband, he will be up to the task. And I pray that God will give him that wisdom. Amen. I pray for the people of Kaduna State to cooperate with the new governor. Amen. People of Kaduna State, remember that my husband lived talking about peace, talking about security, talking about unity, talking about development. I know he is somewhere seeing us, and I want to believe that he is very happy wherever he is. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you, and God bless you all. On behalf of the to briefly present the Gong people and their thanks to everybody here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to bid farewell to this distinguished Nigerian citizen, the number one citizen of Kaduna State and the beloved son of Gong Chipdom. Chairman, Northern Governors Forum. Welcome, sir. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, mm. my lords, spiritual and temporal, our wife and our children, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, What is the brother to say? More than to say, like we all believe in all religions, from God are we, and to whom to him shall we return. Mm. The only difference is we don't know what date we will go. Mm. Look around you. Look at your neighbor. Mm. One day, you will go, and your neighbor will go. I wanted to decline to speak, but then I remembered I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the 19 states of the northern states. And personally for me, the testimony that Governor Yakoa was good, was a good man, is testified by our presence here, by God. Mm. I believe that by our number and by our piety, whatever we prayed for this gentleman, God will grant it. Amen. The eloquence of my brother Hassan Kuka, I think, has said everything. This is followed by the son and by the wife. For me personally, we shared many things in common with Governor Patrick Ibrahim Yakov. We transferred our services to the federal government in 1990. We were in Monte Carlo, in Monaco, together, when I got a call that we had been appointed permanent secretary in 1999. Patrick Yakov had always called me on a weekly basis. Patrick Yakoa, a Christian, was always the one who would remind us of a prayer time during our meetings. Patrick Yakoa, until people or those who know him, they didn't know whether he was a Muslim or a Christian. And I was happy, therefore, when the Jibwe's sect, the Izala sect, really postponed their activities in his honor. In his speech, the first speech that he delivered, he said he was not a Christian governor and he was not a Muslim governor, but a governor for all. And I remind us that all of us 
who have one position or the other, to always remember that out of millions, God chose us. Mm. Not because we were the most brilliant, not because we were the best, but because it was his will to do it the way he did it. And when we swore, some of us holding the Quran, some of us holding the Bible, we swore to treat all manners of people, Christians, Muslims, and animists, the same, giving them equal opportunity. My God judges you based on your intention. If you intend to be good or to do good, he will reward you. If you intend to do evil, even if the result is good, you will be judged by that intention. Believe me, believe me, believe me, our friend, our brother had good intention, not only for Nigeria, not only for Kaduna State, but all manners of people that he had met. And that is why, please permit me, as a new member has joined us, to really say to him that he has a big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. But he can easily fill it when he develops and he has good intention, of which he has already told us that he will. And by the grace of God, Governor Ramallah, your brothers are with you. Some of us have been burnt, but we are still standing. We will help you. We will help you. And God will help us all. But most importantly, to our wife, she has prayed. She didn't demand much from us. All she wants is the friendship that has been established. Let it not be broken. I believe both the Nigerian Governors Forum and the Northern State Governors Forum will join hands to ensure that they do not. There are many things we cannot fill, but we will do our best to retain that relationship. May the soul of our brother rest in perfect peace. Amen. May we also, when our time comes, may we go ready as we have been asked. Are you ready? Many of us may not even know what readiness is all about. Let me conclude by saying, what does it benefit a man to lose his soul when he gains the world? I paraphrased. I thank you very much. <laughs> governor Rotimi Amechi, the governor of River State. And Rich men and those in government, the poor man does not fight a Christian or a Muslim mm. only when they are used to fight by the leadership. Because there's no difference between the Cardinal Muslim and the Cardinal Christian. Only one thing unites them. Poverty. And he said the solution to peace is poverty. And he promised me that the number of years he will sit stay in office, he will fight poverty. Because until we are able to fight poverty, that is when we will know that peace we are looking for. I have told my friends, including Bishop Kuka, that no matter how much you preach on the pulpit, a hungry man is a hungry man. If you say, that shall not steal, he will steal. You can preach as long as you want. If the stomach is hungry, food must enter. If food does not enter, death will follow. And my Lord, the bishop knows that none of us here wants to die. So they will steal. So he believes that one way for which all of us governors and those, who are, those, those of us who are in government can find peace is to fight together, whether Muslims or Christian governors, to fight poverty. And then we can worship our God in peace. You ask yourself one question. Why do Christian governors attend the mosque when there is a ceremony and we do not disagree on religion? 
So why do Muslim governors attend burials of, or come here to attend the burial of Yakoba, who is a Christian? It is because we know that there is no basic difference in that religion. It is not. It is because of the fact that we agree that we are one united Nigeria amongst us, the elites. But when we are seeking for votes and we look at the majority, if in that state the majority of us are Christians, we preach our Father who is in heaven. And if the majority of them are Muslims, what do we preach? Allah Akbar. <laughs> so it's not about religion at all. It's about leadership. It's about politics. And today, he has sacrificed himself in pursuit of that bridge that you all understand. I hope that we will not disappoint Yagoa because his spirit will continue to hover around us, reminding us of the need to eradicate poverty and have the numerous resources of this country go to as many people as possible so that we can all live in peace. For me, and for my colleagues, the brother, my brother's governors, we will identify with the family. We will continue to identify with the family. Because you see, for those of us who are friends to Yakoa, the beginning of the demise is today. We have all gathered here to say praises and say the things he has done and has not done. And the things he wants to do if he had been alive. We will know those of us who are friends to Yakoa after today. Correct. That's the truth. That's when you will now see that most people won't recognize the wife and the children again. But the same people that have come here today, in honor of Yakoa, may not be able to remember you. But the God you and I worship as Catholics will remember you. And I think that by God's grace, the Governor's Forum will also remember you. When we visited you, we said, if you can't get anybody, please get the chairman. And I think the president who also stood by him will also remember you. Because it, 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 you said here that by the grace of God, he became governor. But God also used the president to support his governorship. So because God can't come in person, if God comes here, all of us will run. I don't know if my lords will run. <laughs> but I'm sure even me, I will run. <laughs> I don't know about their, his evidence, their grace and their lordships, because they know God better than we know. <laughs> but certainly, if God emerges here, we will all take off. But I know therefore that since God couldn't come in person, he came in the person of three. The first person he came in was as the president of the Federal Republic. Republic of Nigeria, who chose the former governor as vice president and gave you one opportunity you never thought you would get, and therefore God answered your prayer. So I believe that the president will stand by you. I also believe that the vice president, who has always worked with him, the vice president reminded us that he worked with him as permanent secretary. He even worked with him before he became permanent secretary in the state service, will also stand by you. I know that the present governor of Kaduna State, humble as he is, quiet as he is, will stand by you. Of all, as a Christian who has worshipped God all my life, I know that God will stand by you. Just take your request to God in prayer, and he will stand by you. I pray that the soul of Patrick and the soul of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, will do what? Yes. 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 Thank you. Should, in spite of the importance of the passage of the budget today, be here also, to attend this Mass. And he said to me, you are a Christian, I'm a Muslim, if both of us come to this Mass to give a clear indication and send a clear signal to all Nigerians that Muslims and Christians in this country must work together. His Excellency, my late friend and brother, Patrick Yakoa, was a very dependable, reliable, and compassionate brother and friend. He was passionate about peace in Kaduna State. He insisted that there must be peace and unity for any meaningful development 
to take place. His dream was to make Kaduna a home to all Nigerians, irrespective of tribe and tongue, irrespective of religious beliefs, irrespective of gender. I remember very vividly that Patrick, Yakoa, and I were in Rome together for the concession of His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaikon, not too long ago. Ever since then, I visited Kaduna to see General Buhari, to condole with him, and my brother Patrick was also there with me. I have never made any trip to Kaduna State that Patrick has not come to meet with me either at the airport or in government house. Two weeks ago, when I went to pay the condolence visit, Patrick Yakoa once more emphasized on the need for peace in Kaduna State. So I believe that the greatest rights in Kaduna State voted overwhelmingly for Sir Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa and my humble self to steer the affairs of Kaduna State from 29th May 2011 to 29th May 2015. This victory was a significant milestone and watershed in our political journey towards greatness in many years. It was at the election that brought in the first Christian as governor of our state. He pulled majority both in many of the 23 local government areas of the state, cutting across the three geopolitical zones, thereby, thereby defying ethno-religious barriers. During his inauguration in April 2010, he delivered a landmark speech where he categorically told the world that he would not be governor for Christian alone, but for all and sundry. This singular declaration endeared him to all citizens of the state and beyond and even beyond. His declaration in this respect manifested in his subsequent policies and programs, thereby earning him the acronym Yakoa Nakoa. His vision was anchored on three cardinal thrusts, namely the task of securing, uniting, and developing the state. He pursued these broad objectives with single-minded mind, single minded determination. The fruits of his labor had started manifesting before the cold hands of death took his life. In the most strategic manner, the reality of which I am yet to come to terms with. My late boss, Governor Patrick Ibrahim Yakoa, exhibited uncommon leadership quality, qualities. He was an embodiment of patience, simplicity, patriotism, peace commitment to do peace, commitment to duty, thoroughness, honesty, nationalism, team player, experience in public service, and a host of other styling qualities that time and space would not permit me to mention. And if I thought of prayers, definitely Nigeria will get to where we want to go. Let me sincerely, on behalf of my not very easy to lose the character, personality of that nation. Let us condole the people of Kaduna State for what has happened to the state. Definitely, that Saturday was a very, very dark Saturday. And let me also condole all Nigerians for the loss. Because from all what we've had and what we knew even before his death, our late brother was a nationalist. Of course, you know, sometimes we say in different forms that death is a necessary end that will come when it will come. And let us try to. You just see that. Keep your hand down. But how and when it comes, Yakuwa played his own part very well. As a civil servant, epitomizes 
the best of the civil service, the discipline of the civil service, the character of the civil service. And not the civil service of today, that directors are have more houses than the richest man like Dan Gote. The civil service of those days, where people say that if you live as a civil service, when the, when the civil service passes, passes through you, your conduct, your outrances, that the tribal divide is blood. Partly, as we know, having <coughs> religious divide in his blood. When we Nigerians, including the elders, are very senior citizens of this country, in their private discussions, in their meet that divine providence, we are holding the services. Uh, some of us are very senior citizens that in our utterances we should emphasize more on the things that bring us together as a nation and de emphasize the things that divide us. All nations have their own history. All the great nations in the world have their own history. Sometimes if you read about the histories, you can't even believe. The day I visited the Holocaust Museum in uh, Egypt, I'm oh, sorry, in Israel, I asked whether Germans do go there. And they said, yes, Germans.